Uh, for more uh, on uh, Big Tech's plans to power AI using nuclear energy, uh, we are joined right now by Mark Nelson, Radiant Energy Group Managing Director. Um, how realistic is this in terms of what does the time frame look like? Because we've been talking about nuclear for a very long time, but sort of getting it, uh, getting it right and getting it soon seems to be the bigger question. Timeline is absolutely going to be one of the fairest and first questions. I think without a doubt, we're going to see this load for new AI locked in place with whatever power plants are available as the long-term plan to deploy nuclear uh, comes to fruition. In other words, they're going to figure out where they want to put data centers, make sure transmission is going to work, get whatever power they can available, and then build it up as along with deploying the new nuclear. But I think the bigger question is, you know, where is this stuff going to actually reside? Are they going to get the permits to do it? Is there going to be a whole sort of not in my backyard situation still? Has that changed? It absolutely has changed. So one of the first things I would say is that almost every American nuclear plant was originally sized back in the 1970s and 80s for double or triple the amount of nuclear power that eventually got built with the turn away from nuclear in the 80s and 90s after Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. So existing nuclear plants have massive available transmission corridors, and you don't have to get anyone's permission to add more wire to go through it if you aren't taking any new land. Then at the nuclear plants, nuclear plants that have been operating for 30 or 40 years, now that turns into a strength because it means that everyone living around the plant knows about the plant, perhaps works at the plant, goes to schools paid for by the plants. There's a yes in my backyard that you're going to see overwhelmingly in these projects. In terms of cost and in terms of return, um, given the way the technology works right now, do you look at this sort of slate of, of big investments as, you know, major wins economically? Do they need to be tested to sort of get to the next place because there's going to be sort of, uh, you know, cost uh, issues on the first round of these? Well, this is just the beginning. That's what I'd say first. So, for example, um, this Amazon deal is much bigger than Google Seal from two days ago, but it's much smaller than Microsoft's deal from several weeks ago. So the Microsoft deal is valued in over $10 billion of electricity from nuclear but this uh, Amazon deal is an excellent start. What we'll start to see is a race between the biggest tech companies to make bigger and bigger, more immediate investments in nuclear power. This is still a very gentle feeler effort in a way from Amazon, as exciting as it is for the nuclear industry. Should we be worried? Someone actually sent me a, just a note right now about this. Is there any worry that nuclear, uh, given the capital requirements to, to get it going, becomes owned by all the big tech companies? I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, much more likely is that big tech companies do not want to operate nuclear. So to get a nuclear plant built is still going to require funding and buy-in from a lot of parties. I think what's going to be clear is that after a decade of pointing the public and the government and nonprofits in one direction, all the big tech companies said, we're powered by renewables. It was false. It was never true. They were being powered by the grid, which is coal, nuclear, hydro, and some renewables, so uh, and natural gas. What we're seeing now is that the big tech companies are finally stepping up to a leadership position that they always should have had to deploy the nuclear that will benefit all of society.